Hi, it's uh, Ricky of Mushful Times here once again. Um, tonight we have vocalist J Jacob of the Telford-based metal band Recall The Remains. Um, all the that. other band members are too camera shy to come on tonight, so Jacob and I are just going to have a beer and we're going to take a mick out of you guys. So, fair play to you. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing I have to ask, before I ask how the devil are you, um, how's the bowling for Elliot's 30th? It went honestly brilliant. It was a right laugh. Um, I was being, I was being absolute terror like normal. But yeah, no, it was a right laugh. Um, we got Elliot massively drunk. Um, he, oh, like he couldn't even roll a fag. Like I've got <laughs> a thirty, I've got a thirty second video of him just trying to put Bucky in a fag, and then just he spent thirty seconds just trying to put it all together and it just wasn't working <laughs> <laughs> so that's it that's i'm 30 but i'm sure i read in the same post that he's a granddad now i hope that's not true no elliot's not a granddad nah <laughs> he's just the I oldest of the band <laughs> honest i'll tell you what though mate it's like you look 10 like look at pictures from 10 years ago with elliot his face hasn't changed <laughs> i would think he's a vampire <laughs> Uh, good stuff, man. Good stuff. Uh, yeah, we're bowling at the weekend as well. I got uh, I got nine strikes between two games, but that's beside the point. Um, I was playing my son, who went away in a bad mood after that, but never mind. Uh, it was tough <laughs> love. When is what? Yeah, tough love. <laughs> <laughs> but um, for those eagle-eyed uh, listeners, um, you would have heard that Zach and Jacob uh, were on Mossville Radio on uh, last Wednesday with myself and Shells. So you kindly, one of the things that you talked about um, was your debut album that you have coming up. So how's yes. the recording uh, process been for you and how far into the process are you now? The recording process, so with the last three songs that we've released, which are going to be on the album, which is like Fairfield, Empty Woods, Life Taker, yeah. was very much just being like of stuff we were already playing and everything like that. So it was like already stuff that we were doing and people knew us for anyway. Yeah. But with these new three, we wanted to take it to a different approach of stuff that we haven't done yet. So mm -hmm. like to our producer just being like, we know you're going to say this is not normally like us, but we want to do something different. And yeah, no, I don't know about the other guys because I haven't been there for their lot of recording. But for me and Jordan, normally I can get three songs, three songs recorded in a day, done. Like I don't need any more than that. Yeah. This time it took me one day to like one day just to record one song. Well, the question it, has to be asked: Is that the producers the same to you? Nah, that's not right. Or um, was that a case of you weren't happy with your performance, or does the producer say to you, like, I know you can do better than this? So this is why we go to Tom. So like Tom from Monochrome Productions, he just he's like the sixth member of our band, so yeah. he's there just being like, you can do better than that. Like, can you do this? And we'll just literally just do different things. But um, it was like. It was the fact of him pushing us and also the headaches that me and Jordan was getting from the pressure was building up in our um like in our heads was just horrific, mate. Like I was pitching um screams. I think Jordan was saying like on an F, like an F sharp and E register, and I was like, that's ridiculous. All right, yeah, but my head really hurts. So <laughs> horrible. But, yeah, um, no, well, I, I, do you know that's actually what I was going to ask? Like one of the interviews that I've had the pleasure of doing is like Dan Sweeney. Um, he's like yeah. Swedish death metal and all the rest of it, and he's been in so many bands. But he's now saying like whenever he growls, he immediately just gets a sore head. So, so how, so how did you cope with that then? Like, did you say? Do you just say, look, at the end of the first day, this is all I can do, mate. We'll come back next week and I'll do one more or two more or what? Um, because I am very headstrong and I like to just try and get stuff done, I will just take a couple of minutes, let it settle, get some fresh air, and I'll just go straight back in for it. But and because that's exactly Jordan, what happens. Yeah, it's literally just been like, um, because Jordan was there as well, it's just been like, if I can get to at least like the chorus, Jordan can do his part, I can have a little break, just something to drink. Yeah. And then go back in again when he's done. Yeah. Do you have yeah. your um, 
did you have your routines before you went into the studio? Like, how did you get your vocals ready to actually record? What do you do? So what I do normally is that um, before gigs, it's like, and studio, I was drinking like um, green tea and honey because that's something that I got from um, Josh from Monasteries. I just tried that once and I was like, you know what? This is, it's brilliant because it's like, the honey is just naturally like, um, like, I can't describe how it is. It's like, it's like a natural antibiotic, yeah, isn't it? So, like, it kind of really soothes your throat without making it really sticky. And then, like, the green tea has no caffeine, milk, or anything in it. So it can just warm my voice, like, my throat up for me. Yeah. And then um, I'll make a load of stupid noises, mate. Like, <laughs> I'll sound like I'll sound like a dying cat when I'm doing my highs. When I'm doing, like, my mids and my lows, I've been doing, like, Mongolian throats. Well, you see, you just brought that up because I was about to say... Uh, I was going to see where you were talking about your vocals, and I was about to say I'd watched one of your TikToks where you were doing that Mongolian stuff. Um, I don't know whether you saw The Who or something like that and just went, that's absolutely amazing. How did you discover Mongolian vocals? So I've, I like, I've, known, I've known about it for a while, and it was just something that I was there just like, you know what, this is really cool. I would love to try and like be able to do this as just like a parlor trick. But then when I realised just being like, um, when I'm practising like some of my highs, like um, Lorna Shaw's vocalist, Will, um, Will Ramos, I was there just like, this is very similar. I was just like, and then I just started doing it. I was like, okay, I can actually, do, I can make myself sound like a didgeridoo, <laughs> which is really cool in a way. So like when I do it now, people are actually like, what the hell? And I'm just like, <laughs> sick. <laughs> Just go about my day. <laughs> so we're going to have some. Are we going to have a few chants in the, the album then? Um. So not with like that, but it's helped when it comes to like progressing on my lows, as you saw by that TikTok. That, um. That's where like I've just always wanted to prove, even if it's not been on one of the songs recorded, I can always do it live. So I'm yeah. always just trying to yeah. get better at being a vocalist. No, absolutely, and fair play to you. Um, but you had said about the three singles that are already release, released um, this year, um, but the three songs you wanted to do something different. So in what yes. direction are you taking the, the new three songs in? So and how do they differ? If, so if anyone's seen us recent, like in, I'd say like the last year, if anyone's seen us in the last year, we have played these songs like very sparingly because we don't want to get, to, we didn't want to get too attached to him before any major changes happened to him. So we're like, let's not play him too much. We'll get people's reactions. If they like it, we'll record him. Yeah. And the reactions were positive for him. Like, um, But one of them's definitely like on the lines of Our Hell, but a, I'd say a bit more technical than Our Hell. Um, one of the influences on Wednesday, being Lamb of God, I'd say definitely goes into the direction of Lamb of God, but has um, a hardcore riff in it as well as our beat down. So we yeah. have a beat down section as well. Really, that really put, like, I was really happy about that. <laughs> and then with the, with the next one, it was very weird because it was like, the vocals for it is like something that our producers showed us that Pantera has done. And we were like, all right, okay, let's give it a try. And then um, through the, without spoiling a lot of it, through some of the sections, it is literally just me, Jordan and Tony. So it's just drums, bass and vocals, no nice. guitars. Nice. Yeah. So it's just like a lot of stuff that we haven't done. So I'd say like you could probably put that down to being like more of a new metal kind of song. So, you know, I could I could interview you in a year's time, and um, you could be completely in a different direction again. I think it's fair to say that recall the remains or do exactly whatever the hell they like and whatever sounds good from within. Because I think your lineup is pretty much the same for years and years, is it? So recently, so like in the last, so since I've joined, which is like what six years now, I believe. So five, six years now, same lineup. Like, we've not, until Zach was off, 
um, because he was um, away on holiday. Until Gift Fest, we hadn't done a gig with all yeah. five of us there. So yeah. there was always five of us. So yeah, no, it's just like until I joined. And, yeah, and that, no, we've that, had the same line. That's what music's. That's what makes the music sound so good. If you've got a solid right uh, lineup, then you can do exactly whatever you want, and it will sound good. You could write a, a cover of "Girls, Girls, Girls" by Motley Crue or something like that, <laughs> and it will still sound good. You know, because um, you're all experienced musicians. You all know. Has somebody raised? The A game or something like that that's brought a new direction. Do you think, or do you think it's been a whole collective experience, or or has Zach just blew it out of the water this time or something? Or really, honestly, it's a collect, it's a collective experience. Like it's like um with these songs, it's like Ellie and Zach will normally come up with the riffs, and then yep. we start throwing all of our stuff into it as well. It's been like Jordan does his baseline, like no one. No one tries to tell Jordan what it does with his bass line because <laughs> Jordan, he doesn't like to admit it, but theory-wise, he is phenomenal. Wow. I've seen that guy play. It's his, like The time he got his five-string, brand new, didn't play it, brought it to practice, but then forgot that all of his bass riffs were on a four-string before. Yeah. Just, trans- just played it on a five-string as he was figuring it out on the spot. And I was like, what are you doing? Yeah. No. Yeah. Just absolutely incredible. Yeah. And you are, you are a brilliant band of musicians. Um, and you're always releasing music. But I just wondered, with the three singles, um, you're saying that they're going to be in the album. Are you going to keep them as a trilogy in the album? So maybe the songs one, two, and three, or two, three, and four, are you going to split them up? Or do you know how you're going to set out the songs? So it has been discussed. And... It was, I'm very much a person that likes to try and think forward at a lot of points. So I was thinking about this about three months ago for the line um, for the lineup of the songs and none of them are together. They're all jumbled up into what I believe. And like the guys have also agreed what we believe is the best order from it having like Darker Path, The Night Will Bleed, Ah uh, How the last three singles we've done and then these three singles, we believe that this is, the order that we've selected for it is the best order it could be in. Good. And is the album title a, a song title or is an album title completely different? Album, so again, ideas are still getting thrown around for it, but I believe it's going to <laughs> you get... You knew what my next question was going to be, didn't you? <laughs> uh, I just, uh, like, you, like you said, mate, it's been like, vocalist i'll just i'll think of stuff on the spot as i'm going along <laughs> but, um yeah no album title is like not fully decided on yet but i think when it comes to the time of us deciding and we actually decide that we need to get a name done for it that's when we'll actually decide but yeah. everyone will probably think of ideas in the meantime of just what we could have for it and then we'll just go through a selection yeah so do you think that's pretty much this is chapter two of Recall the Remains. Uh, Dead Dreams is maybe chapter eight. You're you're fully supportive of it, but it's different now. So if I was to believe, if anything, I uh, um with these next three songs, and it's something that we've all talked about as well, with these next three songs, we we don't think we've hit our sound yet. We don't think we've found it quite yet. So with these three songs, we're closer, but I feel like this album is just like a prequel. Yeah. I don't think we're going to properly be able to, well, I say that, I don't think we're going to properly hit our sound until like the next album or the album after that. Yeah. Because like you said, we'd haven't, it's not like we fully settled down in one similar direction. So whether we carry on being like multi genre or we yeah. just kind of develop our own kind of thing. Yeah, it'll be fun to see what happens. Regardless, to be honest with you, it's fun. It's fun uh, when I have chats with vocalists because um, basically what I, I usually hear from vocalists is that they do fuck all for a year because the other guys are writing the music, and then two weeks before you go in the studio, you're like, "Shit, I better write some lyrics." Then, um, but, that, <laughs> but do you do you bring riffs? Can you play an instrument as well? Do you bring ideas, musical ideas? 
so I can play I can play bass, but I haven't played in so long that like I just don't even bother anymore. Jordan will um, just look at you saying what are you doing? <laughs> pretty much, yeah. Like I like when before I joined the band, I was actually a fairly decent one to where like Jordan was just like, You are a really good bass, but I was like, Thank you. But <laughs> Um, yeah, no, it's like I don't play that much anymore, so it's I can't I can just come up with riffs that are just being like coming from my mouth, yeah. But, um, yeah, no, it's been oh, so are you are you the guy that at four o'clock in the morning then you'll just record and then send it to the guys at four o'clock in the morning? This is my best riff, by the way. When you hear this, (laughs) so I thought I don't do that because I'm not gonna lie with. So well with Elliot more than Zach. Um, if it's not written down on a tab, he won't really play it. He doesn't improv a lot of the time, so he's very much like um say for like the guitarist from Polythia. Yeah. He writes down all his stuff beforehand and then he learns how to play it. Yeah. Everybody so, has their own way, don't they? Exactly, yeah. So it's like one of them was shown the tabs and then it's not fully decided, like nothing concrete until we record it. Yeah. So anything like Tony, for instance, will change how he wants to play the drums through songs all the time until it's recorded. And then and he's I, like, no, I bet you he's a bugger. He does that in the live front as well. I bet you just change it. Keeps you on your toes. <laughs> For me, I'm not going to lie. It's been like, because of me being here, there and everywhere. I notice sometimes when Tony's done something and I'll look back, I'm like, that was very cheeky. <laughs> ah, good stuff, good stuff. But see what the crowd probably didn't notice anyway, so you'll get away with it, you know. You'll get away with it. Nah. But one of the things that I particularly love about you guys is, uh, and any band, is that uh, they have more than one vocalist. Now, you guys have three uh, with, uh, obviously, yourself. You've got Jacob on bass and you've got Zach on guitars. Is that something that you have experimented more with the newer material, do you feel? No. So, like, with the newer stuff, Zach's not the most confident when it comes to his singing. So he doesn't want... He didn't want... We wanted to try and get him onto the tracks when it came into singing, but he didn't feel like he was up to it. So it was like, respect what you want to, but he just wants to do it live. Okay. But, um, yeah, so it's like, Zach, I feel like he wants to be there to kind of bolster and like strengthen people than actually be as a main vocalist like me and Jordan are. Okay. Yeah. But um again with these songs, like we had the ghost and um, like we had the ghost influence has been Jordan's kind of like inspiration for it. It's just been like big loud choruses. As we like to say, it's been like having the black ladies in the back. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> yeah, it's just like gospel choirs, eh? Yeah. It's like you just have all the black ladies in the back, proper bolstering it. That's yeah. what, yeah. <laughs> did, did I hear you right that Zach didn't want to record his vocals in the studio, but he's perfectly fine doing it live? Yeah. I thought it would be more nerve-wracking singing live than in the studio, or do you think it's because everybody's going to be watching them? So I feel like when it's live... Like I was saying, he's there just to kind of add the depth into Jordan or like Jordan's voice or to my um, screams as well. So it kind of just gives it that extra volume and gain to it. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, I just I don't think it's something that he wants to even try to do. Or he's just very critical of his singing voice to where he's just like, I don't feel quite confident yet to sing on like one of our songs yet no fair enough fair enough um but also on the live front it must be great for you and other guys sing as well because that means that you can lose your shit for a wee while to be honest with you he doesn't hit like there's only one part that you overtake he does for me that i don't do just so i can get a breath back and that is in the very last section of our hell before we go to the last <laughs> breakdown yeah apart from that I do, I do all my lines. <laughs> <laughs> well, fair play to you, mate. Fair play to you. Um, but just the last question about the album then. Uh, yeah. So what was the studio? Who's producing and mixing it for you? Um, and then we'll talk about the artwork. So who's producing it, mixing it for you? So same guys we've been going to since 
I've joined this band. We've been going to Tom. Tom Gittins from Monochrome Productions. Yeah. For five, six years now. Like, I don't know how much we can just blow this guy's head up more than it needs to. But um, he is one gen- genuinely a lovely person. He, yeah. He personally, he wants to be involved, like to kind of be that extra member. So he, and um, which we allow him to, so, so he can give more passion to the songs as much as we do. Yeah. So if we feel like that, it's just been like, it's even if we're not there, we could, li- we know these songs are in safe hands. Yeah. But yeah, Tom Gittins, Monochrome Productions, never going to, we're not going to go to anyone else. Well, that's what I was going to say. Like, why? I mean, if you've got a settled formula, and why break it? I mean, the the world's your oyster. You can go to any studio, any producer, or whatever like that that you want to. But um, if you loved everything this guy Tom does, but did you call Tom something different over that weekend, especially when he was pushing you in the vocals? Um, um, I wasn't in point, but. <laughs> Tom started getting to Jordan would just look at him because he would know what's coming. He would just be like, Can we try and go for a higher harmony? And then Jordan would know when it was coming. And then Tom was like, So Jordan, and then Jordan would just go, No, I've fucking heard you. No, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. And then he would do that for a little bit and then he will fall back, stop messing around and be like, Fine, I'll do it. Let's go. Because he knows the how much better it's going to make the songs. That he's just like absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. Um, just just a, a question that's just came into my head, and I'm conscious of the time, uh, but we will come back on. But it's just a quick one. Your debut EP, Dead Dreams. Um, if you were ever given the opportunity to re-record it, would you change anything about it? Would you um put new song, uh, to put new um, taste onto it, like new ingredients into it, or? I feel like if I was just to, if I feel like if we were to do that, I would do something maybe like 10 years after it's already been released. I feel like anything now that we were to do to it wouldn't really change much apart from guitar tones, screams, and singing. Yeah. Whilst I feel like it's the same that if, we, like, I like to say when, not if, but <laughs> when we make it bit, when we make it big and famous. Good. Um, what is it? It's the same like if someone learned our songs and like started covering them. I'd literally just be like, it's cool, everything like that. But make it your own. Like, I don't care. Like, if you like the song enough to learn it and want to perform it in front of people, make it your own. Yeah. Yeah. Have you yeah. have you ever been asked to do a, a guest appearance? I guess a lot of guest vocals. Um what at gigs? Yeah, either at gigs or actually recorded. So like um what is it? At gigs, yeah. No, I've been asked by Hayden, which is a good um good friend of mine from Old Wolf. He'll ask me to do like one of um Ben Mason's parts in their song I Am Plague. Cool. Which absolute like Ben Mason isn't. If you've not heard um, the band Bound in Fear, Ricky. Yes. Yeah. Absolute. Yeah. yeah. yeah absolute monster on vocals. <laughs> but um, and also our friends in Casting Tefra. I actually recorded a song, two songs with Vanitas doing the rumbling intro to one of my favorite animes, Attack on Titan. And I got to act, and then me and Jordan got to do feet tracks on our on another friend's track, and um, Beyond Your Design, like through the veil. So, yeah, so noise. Like, yeah, so like we jumping around a bit more. Got some other things that are in the works and everything like that with other people. But um, yeah, no, it's all doing. It's all. It doing the one thing uh, is promoting the underground scene, promote, promoting the metal scene in the UK. And I'm telling you, I'm 50 in a couple of weeks. I know I don't look it. But um, but uh, I can't, I like seeing Scotland, obviously I know Scotland. I can't remember Scotland ever being so strong. Um, extreme metal, death metal, just metal in general, uh, in, in, general in general is just absolutely incredible at the moment. And if, it's the exact same in England as well. And long may that continue. And Wales and Ireland, of course. 
Um, but along with that, continue, mate. I think this is what something we were saying, like at, um, the festival that shall not be spoken. It's coming up after the break. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I think we were saying this before. It's just being like, at that, like, because of the lockdown and everything, and everyone had to go to like local venues and yeah. then like stay in the country for bands that are only playing in that country it has kind of the lockdowns were terrible and yeah, things absolutely. like that. But I think it did strengthen that kind of kind of country music scene that we have, where to where like bands like Malevolence have blown up, rightfully so. Sleep Token, they've just blown up from it now. Yeah, absolutely. Totally agree. Totally agree. Um, listen, Jacob, thank you very much for your time tonight. I've only got a few questions left for you, so I do appreciate the yeah. time that uh, uh, you're taking to speak to me. But of course, Any. one of the main reasons for this interview is that you're going to be playing Moshville Oktoberfest 2023 yes. on Saturday, October the 7th at Ivory Blacks in Glasgow. Um, yes. Now, Ivory Blacks is um, it's a brilliant venue. It's 300 capacity. You've got a brilliant area on the left-hand side for merch. You've obviously got the stage in the middle. Uh, you've got in the bar on the right. That's the most important part. Uh, yeah. And then you've got... Like a, uh, it's just a brilliant venue. Um, the sound guy is absolutely brilliant as well. So I cannot wait to see you guys live. Um, I hope you bring it. Honestly, mate, like... We can't wait. It's going to be obviously our first time in Scotland. So, like, I know any t- it's like any time that we do a gig, we're just going to bring our A game for it. <laughs> so, um, we can expect you jumping around. Um, but yeah. what about drum kits? Are you in a, a bad habit of breaking drum kits or drum kits will start off in the one position, but by the end of your set, they might be in a different position? That has happened a couple of times um, <laughs> where, like, we've moved, like, between me and Zach jumping and moving around, we have shaped Tony's drums and then knocked over cymbals. But um, because every, I'm very aware of the fact of how much drum, kiss, um, drum kits can cost, and any time Tony, our drummer, has used his drum kit for a gig and then I've put my foot on it, I know his um, fiance has actually brought him that drum kit. So I'm there just like, oh, like my foot goes on there for a bit. It comes into my head. I'm like, no, she would kick my ass. <laughs> it's like my fa- one of the things that I'd love to do is like jump from the drum kit. But then I feel like I would want to try and jump too high and then just yeah. break the whole bait. Yeah. So it's just something that's not on the table. If you control yourself, young man. I uh, can't sometimes. <laughs> But what I would encourage you to do is uh, just jump over the barrier and uh, just mingle with us. Because uh, I, I would be shy and pushing you all over the fucking place, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, very much looking forward to seeing you guys up here as we are, every single band. Um, what we're trying to do is just promote UK metal. Um, I mean, I could, I could have played it safe and chosen all Scottish bands, um, but no, uh, I'm 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 picking metal to the masses runners. I'm picking bands that have played Bloodstock and stuff like that. Um, that I haven't played up here before. Red Method I haven't played up here before. Torture Demon I think I've just played once. I think it was a vial they were supporting. So it's just all about building crowds and um, getting you guys name out there. So exactly, which honestly is like so honoured to because it's like it's exactly as you said, just being like. One thing that we'll always say, it's just like, we're literally in a little town in Telford. Not a lot, like people in like two hours away haven't even heard of Telford. But um, just the honour to actually come up to Scotland and actually play in Scotland is just, it's an honour. And to be playing alongside like Portrayal of Room, which is our mates, Red Method and Tortured Demons, like phenomenal bands. Yeah. Um, But you're going to be introduced to like so many Scottish bands as well. like. Melted Messiah, they're like a black and stoner sludge jazz doom, if you like that. Oh, um, okay. and, and the thing is, they're a two piece, so they're like the white stripes of Scottish extreme metal. So they've just got the drummer okay. and the guitarist vocalist. Mm. Um, okay, you've got Catalysis, who are just metal, but fuck shit, you will love Catalysis. Um, I mean, they're not too distant from how you sound. 
Um, okay. You, yeah. you will love catalysis. Um, we've got Penny Coffin. That's my touch. That's old school death metal. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. Um, and we've got Vulgar Chaos from New York as well, so we absolutely can't believe that we've got a, a band from New York coming to play. We've already had bands from Finland asking if they can come over for next year, so we're getting there. Oh, we're getting there. So yeah. hopefully this festival is going to get bigger and you guys can come that back. Would... But it depends oh, if you piss me off in the night, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure it'll be good, mate. I'm sure it'll be good. But talk, so you've got our fest um, on the 7th of October. Do you have anything, now that the recording's pretty much done, as you said, have you got anything towards the end of the year? So we've got some stuff. So we've been announced for doing like um, Hammerfest. We're doing like just like a day festival where we're going to play with um, Defence. We're going to be playing with um, Glass, Glass, um, Glass Cave. Yeah, Glass Cave as well, which is like... Um, I knew the I didn't know know him, but I knew the vocalist when he was in another band called Skies in Motion. Yeah. Absolutely. From what I've seen so far, it's just been like one looks like they sound solid as fuck. And he was a lovely guy when I first met him anyway, so I'm sure he's still a lovely guy as well. <laughs> no fair play. So I bet I mean, do you have any idea when the album's going to be coming out? So we haven't, we don't want to set dates yet because the problem that we always do is that we like to try and advertise it as soon as possible Absolutely. so we can try and get build the momentum. Then, yeah, but then what happens is just being like sometimes just stuff's not done as quick as we want it to. And then we're promoting an album, but without having the material there. So we're waiting until we get all the songs done, music video, we have all the money for like, because we would like to do a bundle package as well to where we have T-shirts, CDs, hoodies, and joggers. And with the joggers, if we can get the money for it all and everything like that, it's not just going to be quite basic. It's going to be quite cool. It's going to be really cool. It, if the idea pulls off and everything like that, it'll be a really sick idea. You're not going to be like a trail of ruin and come in freaking pink, are you? <laughs> no. So, we, so with the T-shirt... I obviously I can say I could say more with the t-shirt because we're just going to be using the album. We're going to be using the album art for that. Well, I was actually so, going to say who done that work for you. So we haven't done so potentially this is something that we still haven't asked these people yet because ideas still we haven't finished everything else before even getting the artwork done yet. Okay. Um so what is it? We would love to go with Pedley Art because he's also done like we haven't released the Life Taker one yet, but we'll get the Life Taker one out eventually. He the hoodie design that we're keeping on Backburn, he's done that, so it only makes sense for him to do the shirt. Potentially, we would want to try and work with um Trixie Bell, and um, that did the Death Wolf um shirt. Yes. To try and do the joggers because. The style that I think that she could pull off, especially with what she did with the wolf and the fun, would work really well with what I've got an idea for the joggers, which is obviously not going to tell you the design because I haven't even thought of that yet. It's only on, it's idea. only going to be a recorded in video. Don't worry about it. Oh, mate, like, don't worry about that. I don't mind saying stuff. But the idea is for the joggers to go from like a side tattoo piece. So it's going to go from the ankle all the way up to at least like the butt. Nice, nice. So that's the that's the idea anyway. Whether or not it works properly is yet stuff that we've got to discuss and everything like that. Well, I told you on the radio last week, you better bring a death will shut up. Or We're whenever you've got one on XL, that'll do lovely. We have, do you know what? We have been talking about it. We've been talking about doing a re-release. We might do it as with some different colours, it might not just be a black shirt with red, it might be just completely different colours for it, but there are talks about bringing that back The only thing I worry about a red and white shirt, for example, is I'll end up looking like a traffic cone, because I'm a <laughs> my white ear, so just be conscious of that when you're making up your mind Alright, <laughs> alright, I will <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, cool uh, But we've talked about them a couple of times um, 
we managed. I mean, I've, I've, I've interviewed Dan Carter on a few occasions now, um, mm. and I've interviewed a number of his bands as well. Um, it was quite interesting because I approached him when I had this festival and things, and I approached him. I says, "Look, we want X band, Y band, and Z band," and then he came back to me and said, "What about they call the remains?" I was like, oh, for fuck. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you stuck with us. Uh, so no, uh, he said you guys instantly and things like that. So it was an absolute no brainer. Um, so absolutely brilliant that you guys are coming up. But also a shout out to D- uh, to Dan Carr and DC Sound Attack. So what's the history there? The, oh, there's such a there's such a history with it. So because we record our monochrome productions with Tom. Dan's all um Dan's band that he used to be in before he started DC Sound Attack, which was Left for Red. Yeah, he used to record there as well. So Tom literally just kind of went, "You might like these guys," because yeah. Dan was obviously with Fat Angel at the time as well. That's right. So Dan was kind of always kind of observing us, and then actually with the Heart and the HRH Metal. The one that we did there, our first one that we did, Dan got us that gig. And then we spoke to him afterwards. He got like, he kind of pushed our name out there more and more and more. And then we were just like, he's gotten us gigs when we've not even been one of his bands. We're not even paying him. So we would love to just work with this guy. And then when we actually finally decided just being like, you know what? Let's just go and ask. He literally was just like, You've messed me at a good and bad time because oh, yeah. I'm going to be because he was just like yeah. I'm going to be leaving Fat Angel, yeah. but yeah. he was just like I am going to be starting my new adventure. And we were just like it was more of a no brainer because anywhere that we went, everyone's heard of Dan Carter. Yeah, so it was just such a no brainer. And then like what cemented it the most is last year February we were supposed to. We were doing a tour with Rituals and um, we were supposed to go Southampton on the second day. When all, um, Remember when we had the really bad storm as well? That's right, yeah. Yeah, we were supposed to travel four hours to go down there. Us and Rituals did not want to cancel the gig, anything like that. But um, Dan was asking us, just being like, what do you want to do? Everything like that. And was like, do you know what? We think we're going to try because we don't want to let people down. We haven't went there before. We're going to try. And then Dan was looking up and he was like, I've cancelled the gig. Um, I've cancelled, uh, he cancelled it and he gave the reason why. And he was just like, one, it's very close to the seaside. So like the storm's going to be worse. Secondly, lorries have been getting tipped over. So I'm yeah. just going to be trying to call you every like 30 minutes to an hour to make sure you're okay. And we was just so after that kind of experience, like it was already cemented into it anyway, but that, yeah, fully locked it in that it was just like this guy doesn't it's just experience care about talking us. common sense. It's yeah, it's experience, but it was just the fact that it's like this guy's not just like trying to just have us for our money or anything like that. He genuinely cares about us. So Absolutely. yeah, look like we just caught like he's one of our band dads. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um and shout out to you, Dan. Uh, we'll need to have a, a chat again yeah. soon, mate. Need to have a chat again soon, but we're just going to go back to the album for one last question, um, and then I've got another seven after this. Um, <laughs> with you being the vocalist of the band, then, do you write all the lyrics, or do you um, welcome contributions from the other guys in the band? I always welcome contributions from the guys. Like they've, um, like Fairfield, for example, the original concept for it wasn't actually my idea. It was like a con- um, contribution between me and Jordan, but the subject matter came from Elliot. Yeah. So use that. Like, I always ask the guys for like ideas and everything like that because I'm not the best. I'm not the best speller, and sometimes I'm not the best like person to actually string like sentences and words together. So Jordan helps with that. Zach will put in his like two cents every so often, but apart from that, yeah, no, I kind of have like a free reign of to what I want to do it about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but see how you get like other members of the band, like writing the lyrics. Is it sometimes difficult for them to convey to you how they want you to sing it? 
Or do they just say no? Did they give you the lyrics? You know exactly what you're doing. Just go ahead and do it. Yeah, no, they'll just, uh, they'll literally, it will, they'll only really be there for words. Like uh, when it comes to the delivery of those words, they're just, they're just like, you'll know what to do. Yeah. Just do whatever you want to do. And I'll be like, yeah. cool. But um, <laughs> yeah, no, there's been times like, um, because obviously going to Tom as well, like when the lyrics start with me, they go through like two two more processes of like then take it to Jordan. Me and Jordan will some like go through the lyrics because obviously I'll write his chorus lyrics as like a bass line and then he can change whatever he wants to him. It's just wow. to kind of get the theme of the song and then what is it? And then they go to Tom, where Tom then also helps us evolve the song to make it better. As well. I love the fact that you're so free because there's some vocalists out there that take so much pride in the lyrics, whereas you don't care what Jordan does, he chops and changes them, but he makes them fit in the song and it obviously works. But it must be disheartening sometimes when he's like, oh, What are you doing that for? <laughs> I like that line. So, <laughs> so, on it, so, when it comes to it, like, I was very precious of like, um, like when we first went in with like first inversions, deadlines, those were like the first songs that I did as a vocalist. So, like, yeah, was very precious, held very much to him. And then when it came to like Our Hell, which was like out of that EP, which was like my favorite song, um, was obviously disheartened. But then after I realized, just being like, these people just also want the best for this song as well. And it's not, I might be the vocalist and it might be my part, but then my vocals are also representing the band as well. Yeah. So they need to have an input in this as well. So I'll usually run ideas through them, but then a lot of the times, like, I will just get left alone to do stuff. But it's the same the other way around. You've written the, the chorus for um, Jordan to sing, for example, and you picture in your head how he's going to sing it, and then he sings it completely a different way, or it's not the way that you initially wanted it, but you must have the chemistry there. So weirdly enough, it's just like when it comes to Jordan's vocals, I know how partic- like how he likes to do stuff, which is long, big notes. He likes to do long, big notes. So if I can have it make sense... That's with such a vocal range, words, by the way. Such a vocal range. He's, he's phenomenal. He doesn't give himself enough credit sometimes, but he is phenomenal. And the fact that he wasn't a singer beforehand, he very much like me, he was screaming when they had their old vocalist in, and then he learned how to sing. Just, yeah. Night and day. But, um, yeah, but like um, like saying, it's just like, with Jordan, I knew, one, he can do whatever he wants to him, but I know I only usually set the rhythm for it, and like just the rough words, and I'll just say to him, just like, if you want to change anything, change stuff, and sometimes, most of the time, he'll just be like, nah, makes sense, like, I don't, I like it like that, let's go. <laughs> Listen, um, absolute pleasure talking to you, Jacob. I've only got two very quick questions here. Now, okay. you're coming up to play Oktoberfest, as I said. You're going to have yes. a half hour set. So you yes. might have, what, six songs, say, for example? Yeah. What of those six songs are you particularly looking forward to in the most? It might be like fourth on the set list. Or what's your favorite, personal favorite to sing? And why? I, this. Co- at this current point, that's a that's a really hard question to be honest. Out of all the songs, because obviously I'm not letting you leave favorites. here without an answer. <laughs> that's fine, mate. I love all the songs dearly, and that's not even trying to be a cop out answer. I do love them all dearly, <laughs> but my favourites on the set list have got to be through kind of more of a personal um a personal meaning to it. Life Taker and Fairfield. I love Fairfield because of how hard it hits and the direction of that it goes. And then it was kind of a section where I got, I did some singing and then found that I actually quite like doing some singing. So yeah, those are my two favourite that I like to play. No, fair play to you, mate. Fair play to you. Um, I, I just like asking about that. It just at the end of the interview and stuff like that because yeah, it brings yeah. out answers. Um, but it just yeah. reminded me about your lyrics before I go on to the last question. Um, yeah. Are you the type of vocalist or lyricist that you read a lot of books, 
you watch do- a lot of documentaries, you watch a lot of war movies, or as soon as you open the front door, you've always got a pad and a pen on you. If you see something on the street, you write it down. Where do you get your inspiration from? My inspiration will come from, like, how a song sounds. So, like, normally when it's coming up to it, I'll give the guys of being, like, what I would like to try and aim for. So I'll show references of songs, and then when it actually comes to it, I'll be like, this song sounds like more of an angrier song, so I'm gonna find a su- I'm gonna find a subject that I want to go and explore, to then go down that route, and yeah. that's how typically I write lyrics. I find it just it's a lot easier if I just wait until the song's done, then have preset oh, lyrics. I was right. and then... You do nothing yeah. for a year. Yes, uh... I was right. <laughs> that, the only reason it's ended up like that is because like. With Live Taker, and it was Live Taker that cemented me doing it like this, is because they kept changing parts, which okay. then messed with my part. So I was just like, you guys let me know when you've done, yeah? When you've fully done with a song, and then I'll start putting lyrics to it. So, like, they'll write it, they'll take it to the practice room so they can hear it through amps all together, and then I'll be like, okay, sweet we've gotten to a base level now so i can start making lyrics for this song yeah but, um which also helps me as well because then i can actually hear how it feels live as well so i yeah. can just be like all right this is how it actually feels this is the kind of the rhythms i'm going for the kind of screen that i'm going for to the subject i'm going for it's quite interesting. Like I spoke to Carl Willits, and he's like TV documentaries, and it's all about war and stuff like that. He reads a lot of books. Um, I've got a uh, condo of like Brain Bath, who told me he's, I've got fifteen songs already written. The guys haven't even wrote a riff yet, but he's got fifteen songs with our lyrics. But it's just so interesting thought, to hear how you wait until you hear the songs and then write. Well, okay. So I, I like it's something. Because obviously, like I said to you earlier, it's like I'm always the kind of person that likes to think very far, like, ahead. Yeah. So I've already thought about, like, what I want to do for, like, the next album and, like, where the kind of, like, the subject matter, like, that we might go and explore. I'm a wee bit worried about what you're saying here because that's just saying to me a concept album and you're going to read about swords, knights and dragons. No. So not swords, knights and dragons, but... Maybe demons. I like that. I'll accept that. Yeah. I lo- <laughs> very much um, love demon mythology when I've read into demon mythology. But um, what is it? Yeah, no, it's like with obviously my vocal style improving, the guys are also doing stuff. It's kind of always evolving. So with the this kind of album that we're bringing out, it being a collective of what we have been doing these last kind of five years and how we've evolved from first inversion to these new three songs yeah it's we as a lot of it has been hitting on to points that we try to bring more to light about like mental health like suicide and stuff like that and just being like talk about it like don't try and suppress it yeah, it's just like saying into the fact it's been like we've been there, like yeah. or it's we're still going through it. So yeah. we we get where you're coming from. And it's not something and obviously like a lot of us are in a lot of better head spaces now. Like yeah. we've all gotten out of that way. So mm-hmm. it's just like it's not something that we want to continuously touch on. So yeah. with the next stuff it's going to go into different subject matters and everything like that. We're not going to try and go. As long as it's still dark. Again. Oh yeah. No, if I, if I could have my way, Ricky, me being death core based, all of it would be very dark. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, if ever you do a side project, there's a band up here um, that I recommend to anybody, the head of the traitor, um, fucking brilliant death core band from Glasgow and Ayrshire. Um, there's honestly just, See, when you're up here, you're going to have a brilliant time. But before we close this, um, this is usually when I ask about the instruments that they used in the recording studio. Now, I've only got yourself. So Mm -hmm. something tells me that you're just, give me an SM50 and I'll fucking sing into it. Or have you actually done your research and you went through like different microphones until you found the sound that you're looking for? Or what kind of vocalist are you? 
So with me, I've got my own, like I've got some of my own stuff at home. I've got like um, an SM7B, like yeah. the traditional like podcast mic. And I, any stuff that I do at home is I use that because it just gives such a raw sound to where people can just mix it easier, put effects on it easier. And it's such a brilliant mic. I use that for recording. But like, tip, like some typical vocalists in the studio, I just go on a condenser microphone. I don't know what it really is. <laughs> it makes me sound really nice. So I... Uh, I you know about the one that used in Tom's studio? I don't, unfortunately, know because sometimes he does change it as well. Yeah. He won't, like... I don't think he's... So how does it feel like you, you're completely used to your own microphone or a particular microphone, and then you go into a recording studio and you've got this thing in front of you, like, you don't know how to approach it or whatever? So it's more my my problem when I first was going in. It's just been like because I was a bassist beforehand. I was used to having behind something and it's two hands. Then becoming a vocalist, it's just one hand. So I don't have to find what I wanted to do with my spare hand. When it comes to the um, recording studio, I can't hold the mic stand because I get told off by Zach about it a lot of the time. So oh, I what's the problem with doing that? So apparently, because he did record and tech and everything like that, it will create like vibrations, and because the condensed microphone sensitive, right, it will pick it up. So not allowed to touch it, anything like that. So what will traditionally happen is what they started calling the Goro stance, and I'll go like that, and so once that, <laughs> but, but so I'll just stand like this the whole time. Yeah, fair enough, and. Tense my shoulders, everything, and just that's where my power comes from. I can from. see the guys like tying, tying your hands behind your back. <laughs> you know, right, sing. It's like sometimes it will happen. Like I know that I can, when I'm in the vocal booth, I can keep my head in that position, but then I can just like actually move my whole body so I can keep like a tempo. Yeah. 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 No. Fair play, mate. Listen, Jacob. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you, and I'm so much looking forward to seeing you in a few weeks' time. Um, it's my 50th, and you'll probably find me in the bar. But if you ever jump that barrier into the crowd, you know I'll be the first one to push you, motherfucker. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll be the first one to push you. But, um, yeah, I'm a, I'm especially looking forward to the, the three of you, uh, three vocalists all going at the same time. I've seen it with Niall, and um, it's just absolutely incredible just um, having more than one vocalist it adds so much diversity, diversity to a song and that's what uh, Zach and especially um, Jordan do so uh, I, cannot I wait mean if Jordan if, if Jordan had it his way Elliot and Tony would also be on vocals you know, I was going well. to ask that question like why are, why are they two not contributed because Elliot is very much a person that likes to, he likes to play perfect. That's why you won't really see it. Like you'll see him headbang and he headbangs a lot more than he used to, but you won't see him move a lot because he likes to play perfect. Tony is just too busy and sweaty. So like when he's not playing, he's wiping the sweat away. He's getting some fluid in him so he can sweat it back out. But he's just, <laughs> he's just too busy a lot of the time to play. And so, destroying the drum kit. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. So it's just like if, like he said it before, he's just like when I get more comfortable and confident to do it, I'll do it. And we're like, you do it, mate. We're not going to press you into it. Not going to force you into it. You're already busy enough as it is. I'm not going to worry about it too much. But if it comes, it comes. But we will probably just leave it a surprise for people. My only concern is that um, you might have. Uh, um, every like you may have the four vocalists in the band, and they might just look to you and say, "We don't need you anymore." <laughs> <laughs> They'll take care uh, of the vocal duties. <laughs> this is the this is the thing now, mate. I've I've cemented myself into my role because <laughs> not because they I don't script anything, so a lot of the stuff I do is off my head, and like with doing stuff. Yeah, no, and they're all too anxious to then stay around. They the need you, don't they? Food. They need you. They can't stay around the merch booth for long enough to then have to talk to people. <laughs> no, I'm joking. They can talk. They can talk to people if they if they need to and everything like that. But yeah, no, we we've said it for a while now. It's been like 
I don't think any of us are going to be leaving. Like, we might get annoyed and stressed with each other, but we've gotten a solid group of people that don't mind when expensive stuff when expensive stuff comes. Yes, it might hurt our banks, but they generally don't mind actually chipping in the money to actually yeah. get the best result we can. Yeah, yeah. Long may it continue, mate. Um, you're still yeah. young enough. You're still young enough to make it happen, and um, it may very well happen uh, when the album comes out because you've taken that leap. You've done your singles. You've done your EPs. It's the album that will make it work for you, and I wish yes. you guys the best of luck. I hope that way these songs hit into a way that people just think, wait, this is Recall the Remains, just to hit onto a different point that no one knows what we're actually going to do. I just just have to say, yeah, again, I love the name of the band. When you have a song ready that you're you're just before the album's to be released or anything like that, you know exactly where to send it, you know exactly where it will be played. Um, Never mind any, never mind shelves or anything like that. I'll get played here, right? (laughs) Yes. <laughs> hey, thank you very much, Jacob. Thank you very much for your time, mate. Don't worry about it, mate. Thank you very much for having me. And we honestly were so looking forward to playing in Scotland. Oh, we're looking forward to playing. We're you're looking nearly forward making to me cry. you guys as well. <laughs> nearly making me cry. 